Do a little bit of Nussel in the Pasha. Hi, oh, yeah. Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael. What's Eretz Yisrael? So he says something very, very wondrous about Eretz Yisrael of Nussel. But Nussel in the Amila Bays. He says, he says that Eretz Yisrael, he says that Eretz Yisrael is an aspect, because it's very interesting about Eretz Yisrael. When you look at Eretz Yisrael, you look at Israel, it's weird. There were these seven nations before us here, right? I know the Palestinians every other day, they have a different, supposedly, <laughs> some different other, who knows what, uh, with no uh, kind of no kind of proof of it. But like, oh, we're, we're this people, we're these people, so what's the chart? Why did Hashem make it so that there's be these seven nations here first, before us? So you know, you say what I mean, Klippa, Klippa, the pre, and they have the first a Klippa, and they have a pre. So Rav is like very beautiful. He says, really, if you think about it, you'll understand that. I mean, this is how he explains. He says, the seven nations that were here revealed a tremendous chest of Hashem. That there's an aspect of being here and not not really deserving. Undeserved being here. This reality Hashem created when he made this fact on the ground that there were these nations that didn't deserve to be here. They had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit as well. And they were still here. So it's possible to be here and not be perfect. So if they hadn't had this, it wasn't the revelation of this chesed, so we couldn't have been here a minute if we messed up. You mess up. It's like goodbye. You're like, what do you mean? It's the king's court, king's palace. You can't, you can't be here. You can't just, you can't just do whatever you want here. You have to be very, very holy. What are you doing? You have to. But anyway, we should try our best to be what we're supposed to be. That's the right. We have to do what we can. We're in the chutzur melech. So there's a big plus the chutzur melech. They bring for the as far as bring this idea. My uncle told over me in the name of Pan that that um, that. Um, that when you're in the Chatzor Melech, when you live in the Chatzor Melech, when you live in Eretz Yisrael, Mashiach comes. It's not the same as Chutzor. Chutzor, you need an invitation to come. So you have the invitation. So we know at some point you're going to get an invitation because Kol Yisrael is a Chelik Lomah but it might take a long time. It might be so much. If you live, if you if you're in the palace, so you know they have to throw you out. It's not an invitation. You're here. Crazy, so bad. We have to like not mention. You know what I mean? This is the Chesed Ram. The Chesed Ram says that uh, he brings him back from the Zayin, from the Zayin, that the Eretz Yisrael, President of Israel, even if it's not between us, he's not perfect at any level. He has a very big difference from him and the same guy in Chutzoritz. He says, because in Chutzoritz, you know, we wonder about the Malach HaMobis, right? How does the Malach HaMobis, you know, I mean, you, know, you think it's like you know, pastures. It's not it's, it's above space, I guess, this Malach, right? It's killing millions of people at one time. So the, the Zayin says, no, no, the Malach HaMobis has a particular Shliach for every single person. It's another Malach, another Shliach, and that Shliach is supposed to uh, do the job. So that's what the Malach HaMobis does in Chutzot. It's in Eretz Yisrael, it's Malach Gavriel, it's Malach HaKadosh. And in Chutzot, it's like a Bechina of, it's a Bechina of Shechita, of Holy Shechita. In Chutzot, it's a Bechina of, no, like, just, like, he just, he's just off, Chatz Hashem. Like, he just, you know, it's Chatz Hashem, he has a big spouse. That's what they say, the person, they bring a person after he dies, Eretz Yisrael. So they ask, what do you mean? Well, now you come! <laughs> what do you come? 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 To come here because a big difference dying here and dying in Chutzar. And the Pasha of Ram, even it's even I heard from Big Makobel the Maisa that even and Pasha's also there. Even the Pasha, Pasha person is doing his best to where how much he's keeping or not keeping. He just he's between us. He's trying. He's trying. So it's also this sincere. It's very powerful. Living in Israel, it's not simple. So it's like you have a God. It's a very big thing. It's not a little thing. Living in Israel. So that's the first thing to be understood to be aware. of. Eretz Yisrael is an incredible, incredible place. He says the same thing. He says tzaddikim they're like it's like bechina of the dogging of fish that just no shkit to bechal. Right, no shkit just gather. And the bechina of the tzaddikim they they lived in the water kiviyachol. They lived in a different dimension in this world. This world they lived in the next world. So they they were something else. They don't require shkit. Just gathered up and everything's fine. Yaakov Avinu says, "What do you know?" Like taking it, right? taking a hair from a cup of milk, no, doesn't feel anything, doesn't matter, same difference. We're not going to think about the next one. We're here, he told his daughter, it's about you, it's okay, I'm, I'm here. You know, this is the Sadiqim, they're still here. They're even greater in their, after they pass away than when they're in this world. So, the first thing, the very first thing to understand about it, so, is this tremendous koch. And one of these kochos is this revelation of very wondrous special chesed. Unbelievable kindness that Hashem imbued in this land and gave to us here, and you know, the Zerus says, "Our Vido, he tried to work out what the who's in charge of it. So which Malach, which Sar, 
the ten spheres according to his level, whatever level he was at there. I don't exactly know. Not Netzilus, whatever this means. As it says, Hashem said, leave alone your calculations. Go, go to a place of the highest levels. Start to chap. But Hashem is in charge. It's not there. It's no malach. Hmm. No malach, no sar, no officer, no angel, just Hashem. It's a totally different, a totally different dimension here as well than, than anything else. So this is the revelation of this great kindness. Right? And the same thing with the Mila and Orla. So Hashem made this unit Orla first to reveal and this great chest, the person here, he's a lot of bris. He's this way, he's that way. It, 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 it brings in a reality of chesed king, this great, great kindness, a very, very deep kindness. So we don't really have a shaykh as this orla. Orla has nothing to do with the Jewish people. Like, what are you doing with this orla? Right? Hashem had Rahmanis and told us to do mila and to reveal the kedusha of a, of, a, of a bris, right? <clears throat> Bring us back. It's like it's like it's like conquering Eretz Yisrael. We take it away from the 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 the, the, the They were here only in order to enable this tremendous kindness. Even without this tremendous kindness, that's why they had the Rimitzer Rebbe, who was this Russian guy who did a tremendous tshuva, and he was talking with his aunt, and he's like, it's really weird, you know. Everybody else in our family. No interest in Judaism. Just not interested. And I'm like, I don't know, I'm fired or something, you know. I was like this rock guitarist, and I'm just like, went for it, you know. I just did it. I just was on, you know, I'm on fire. It's really weird. It's like it's like I'm not even part of the family. So he's like, there's nothing weird about it at all. Because like, really, yeah, you don't know the story with the Rebbe. Like the Rebbe. It's like his, you know, his Chiloni aunt telling you about the Rebbe. He's like, which which Rebbe? He said, the Rebbe's a Rebbe. He would go around, it was already an old man. He would go around and knock on the doors. He heard it was a uh, bris. There was a child uh, born. He would offer to do a bris. He says, you knock on your father's door also, your parents' door. He said, hello. I heard this newborn baby born. I said, yes, that's right. Oh, mazel tov, that's beautiful. She said, would you like me to come and perform a circumcision on the child? Should I do bris mila? So the father's like, listen, don't take this the wrong way. I really respect you for coming and giving us, uh, you know, or trying to give us uh, some encouragement and showing your face. It's like just to make sure you're so happy. But we don't believe in these ancient rituals, so we're not going to cut the kid. Why would we cut the kid? For what? So you believe what you believe, but we don't believe in any of that. So why would we do that? Yeah. He's like, okay, fine. Day number eight, he knocks on the door. Like, okay, yes, can we help you? He said, listen, I understand and I definitely respect your desire not to not to do the bris. It's your choice. It's your child. Can't force you. So, but I'd like to ask you, please, can I hold the child? Three minutes. Hold the child. Nothing will happen to him. I guarantee it. Like, this guy's old man. What's he going to do? He plot a knife and like, try to do the bris. Like, the kid's got a clothing <laughs> on. Kid's going to have a diaper on. He's going to have clothes on. Gonna, he's not going to be unclothed. The minute he's to unclothe the kid, I'll just like, you know, whatever. Grab him from me. You can't. He doesn't have the ability. He doesn't have, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong guy. He's not, you know, older man. So, you know, I brought the kid out, and then brought the child out. So he started holding the child and started crying. Just crying, 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 tears. So, after a few minutes, he said, thank you so much. Mazel tov, only good things. He said, so she said, what do you think, the Rebbe? You think he didn't make an impression? He made an impression. So obviously you're on fire for Judaism. But nobody, nobody else in the family is too interested. It's true. So the Bechena is an Indian of like the bris being Megala, this wondrous chesed, even if there's no bris. Even mm-hmm. if there's no bris, Magal is chesed that with the Jewish people. Like, with a bris, without a bris, you're still Jewish people. We're Jew, you're Yid, you, you can never lose that. That's something you can't lose. No matter what you do, no matter how you are, it doesn't matter. You're a Yid and you stay a Yid. It's not a, it's a, it's a, it's a you know, a lifetime membership. You know? It's like you can't, uh, there are certain clubs and things you can't like get out of it anymore. You know, usually they're like more crime, you know, the crime families, like you can't. You know, we don't. It's till till death do you part, and we'll take care of that part if you insist. You know, it's not, you know, so like it's you know it's like so so. Uh, the, this is the way you're a Jew. You can't. It, there's no getting rid of it. It's part of who you are. You can never leave it, no matter what, and it's forever. And um, I still remember hearing from a very great student of Rav Yisrael Ber I don't want to say his name. I don't know if I have permission to use his name, but. Um, he said that there was this guy who was very, very unwell. He had a, a lot of suffering, tremendous suffering. And, you know, he had been in care. And at a certain point, he came to the conclusion that um, he would have a hard time in a relationship with a woman. And quite the contrary, he had a different idea. 
So whatever, he's talking to his therapist, talking to his therapist. So his therapist calls up Rabbi Salvechik. And he asks uh, via this uh, person, he says, uh, tell me, after all, whether or not my, my client's feeling really bad because he became a Jew and he took on Gaius. So I was like, you can go to any rabbi, what, you know what I mean? You pay him a fee for his hour and he'll annul it. No problem. He's like, no. I took on religious gears. I don't believe in that. Conservative reform, I don't believe that's going to mean anything. It's not meaningful. He says it's no good, but I know it is good. So he said, if there's a halachic way that you say that he could annul the gears, he would have less guilt. He'd feel less guilty doing this because, hey, you know, I'm just a regular non-Jew now. I'm not a Jew anymore. So I said, under no circumstances can we find such a leniency. No, I'm sorry. So this person, the student, was like, I don't know, you know, maybe there is a way. He didn't know. He knew he had a tendency earlier. Maybe there is, there is, maybe there is a way. It's impossible. You don't want to look into it? Nope, don't even ask the details of the case. Nothing. No details necessary. For sure not. I don't understand. Maybe they, they find out the details. There is such a thing as calling on knowing the ears. It's possible sometimes. Or like, a person didn't take on the term. It's a person, it's po- whether we could do it or not, I don't know. But you don't even judge it? I won't even think about it. Why not? Think about it. Let's see. Maybe. Was he keeping turning says, wasn't he? What was he holding? You can try and see. Could be yes, could be another guy suffering. So he said, you don't understand. This poor guy, here he is in a place where he's never, he's attracted to an alternative lifestyle. And he has such a hard time with it. And all he has, his only spiritual, like, his only thing going for him is to do. So I'm going to take that also from him? Hmm. He's a guy, he's a guy, you don't want to know and like, go finding him a house Again, Pashti is Lechera, there's no way to do it. It's not so simple to do it. A person, if he took a, didn't, didn't take a turn, admits this, he wasn't real. It's not so easy. Could be someone was always conflicted, he was always depressed. He was like, again, he has this problem that he can't keep Torah, and he, he, he was uh, whatever it was, and he was in the hair. There's what to talk about, maybe. At least this, according to the student's part, maybe. But the Misa, nevertheless, the fact is that this is the biggest thing for a person. The biggest thing for a person is the biggest chuz. And the biggest chuz that affects a person is Jew. Well, we're Jewish. I think we're Jew. It's a tremendous, tremendous chuz. Baruch Hu Kenan Shabbarom Lechvodo. B'zalman at the time. That's first name. It's every person. Every person. Jew, whoever you are. The Mitzvah Hashem gave you the Torah. He gave us the Torah. He, he separated us from the nation. He gave us the Torah. That's an incredible thing. It's incredible kindness. We don't begin to understand every single thing, what it's worth, and how precious, and how, and how valuable it is. So we have to be Zohar to remove these seven Amim, right? And that's, Eretz Yisrael means removing seven Amim. This is, of course, the seven Klippas, right? You have the seven different Bechinis, seven aspects, that these seven aspects we need to learn how to overcome, right? Seven, that's why the, the again, it says, he made, he, he, he made a bris with Avram to give all the nations. He said, that's this idea of bris you have to know. Bris, Eretz Yisrael Bechal, the bris of Eretz Yisrael is by dealing with these nations. There were these, these different behaviors, these different yanim that we have to deal with, having an appropriate chesed, an appropriate kindness, uh, you know, too much expansion, too much without without a chesed, improper, um, inappropriate limits, like stone, right? Inappropriate truth, using truth to kill ourselves or other people, instead of being aware that, again, Hashem wants kindness. Hashem does not want just din, 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 look at someone else with din, look at yourself with din, no, he's no good, he's this and that. It's not what it's about. You have to learn how to be kind and good also. And then also that you have to have a blending. So if you blend, like Sam, you have to learn how to blend things in, work it out, right? Where you have Netzach. You're supposed to win through to serve Hashem, not win through to beat your friend and teach him, I'm right, I'm victorious, that's no good. Right? Hode, same thing about Hode, this idea of admitting, which is the opposite of like this, this, this concept of, of, of when you want to when you want to be victorious, you have to know when to admit. When you're wrong, that's why the two the two legs the two the, the two sides of the same coin. If you know when you're wrong, when you admit when you're wrong, so then you can win when you're right, in the right way. But if you don't admit, you're not willing to admit when you're making a mistake or when the person has a good point, or so then you're not going to get anywhere, right? That's not that's not good, right? Hold and then you sort of mahal, you sort of knowing, knowing to, to the deep wondrous pleasure of connecting to Hashem. It's a pleasure, it's a, it's an unbelievable pleasure. The spiritual pleasure is the best. You help someone, you do. It, it, it's the highest thing. Learning Torah, doing mitzvahs. We have to work very hard to get to that place where we feel it and we're connected to it. And it's a, it's a big challenge to feel it and connect to it. That's what we saw this Lanter, I like to say that, you know, the, this person was learning, real deal learning, dominating, uh, tremendous, tremendous um, hasmada, and he didn't feel any joy. And we saw this said it's external. It's not really who he is. 
Apparently, who is? It has to connect. They have to have to connect. You can't be like always, always running, running. Shem Shalos Bezocha to the or of Eretz Yisrael, and taking a bris and a shlemus.